In this video, we're going to look at ways you can transform hyperbolas. And we're going to use a really great program called Desmos, which is a graphing program to help us visualize this. Now, there are three transformations we're going to perform. The first one is changing the curvature of the hyperbola. The second transformation is reflection. We reflect the hyperbola over the x or the y axis. And the third transformation we're performing is called a translation. Translations involve moving the graph left, right, up, or down. Now I need to point out that the transformations we are looking at in this video are based on the basic reciprocal function y equals a over x. Some of the properties I teach you in this video will not apply to more complex reciprocal functions. But you don't need to worry about that, since the standard mathematics course does not delve into complex functions. So the first transformation we're going to look at is changing the curvature of our hyperbola. And here we have our basic hyperbola function. So we're going to make some little changes to that. So I'll start by bringing up Desmos. And we'll start by typing in probably our most basic reciprocal function y equals 1 over x and here we get our hyperbolic shaped graph. Now I'm going to explore changing the numerator which at the moment is 1. What's going to happen if I make this number bigger let's say y equals 2 over x and what we notice is that the curve seems to pull away from the origin. It seems to go this way. So if I keep making my numbers bigger, I expect that my curve will pull further and further away from the origin. Let's have a go. Let's try y equals 5 over x. And yes, we see that it's pulling further away. So let's explore a really, really big number, a massive number like this over x. And you'll notice it doesn't even show on the graph. I imagine that I would have to zoom out really far if I was to find this hyperbolic graph. And it might take me too long to even bother doing it right now. Oh, there we go. Finally popped up. It took me a long time to find it because the curve has pulled away from the origin so far. All right, zooming back in. How do we make the curves go closer and closer to the origin? And I reckon the best way to do that is to pick values for our numerator that are less than 1 and approaching 0. So we'll try y equals 0 0.5 over x. And there we can see that the curve has pulled in closer to the origin. I reckon if I can get my number really, really small, I can get it to pull so close to the origin that it will look like a right angle. We'll start by doing y equals 0 0.1 over x. And we can see that that curve is getting sharper and starting to look more like a right angle. And now we'll pick a really, really small number. So I've picked 0 0.00001 over x. And it's an orange. And you can see that they basically look like right angles here. So let's write some notes to ourselves. First of all, what happens as a increases in magnitude, a being the numerator? So we notice that as a increases in magnitude, or the numerator increases in magnitude, that the curve started to pull away from the origin. What happens as a decreases or approaches zero? Well, when we picked values of a that were really small, less than 1, we noticed that the curve started to approach the origin, and it started to become sharper. And if we were able to pick a really, really small decimal, very close to 0, it would almost look like a right angle. Now, I have an image here of what we've just done. So when we had large values of a, such as this green curve, the curve was further away from the origin, and when we picked very small values of a close to 0, such as 0 0.1, we started getting these sharper curves, and it started approaching 
more of a right angle shape. So we'll go to our next transformation, which is a reflection. And we're learning how to reflect the hyperbola over the x or the y axis. Now, whether you reflect it over the x or the y axis, it's going to look exactly the same. And I'm going to demonstrate that using these two images here. I'm going to reflect the one on the left over the x axis, and I'm going to reflect the one on the right over the y axis. Now, right now, I'm using a program called PowerPoint. And PowerPoint has this option where you can reflect images vertically or horizontally. Now, I've just moved the screen up a little bit. And the reason I've done this, if you look to the top right, you can now see the flip vertical option or the flip horizontal option. The flip vertical option is the same as reflecting over the x-axis. So I'm going to do that now. You'll notice that the branch that was down here on the bottom left has flipped and is now at the top left. You can also see that the branch that was at the top right has flipped and is now at the bottom right. So we'll look at the image at right, and this time we're going to do a horizontal flip which is the same as reflecting over the y-axis, you can see that the branch that was at the top right has reflected over the y-axis and is now at the top left. The branch which was at the bottom left reflected over the y-axis and is now at the bottom right. Now, when you look at both of these images, they both look exactly the same. So whenever you do a reflection over the x or the y-axis, you're going to get the same result. All right, so I've brought up Desmos now, and we're going to write down a very basic reciprocal function. We'll write down y equals 2 over x. And we want to reflect this either over the x or the y axis, remembering that whichever one we reflect it over, it looks the same. Now I'm going to take the exact same equation, y equals 2 over x. And I'm going to put a negative at the front of it. I'll actually put the negative in front of the 2 for now. You will see that the green graph is a reflection of the blue graph, either over the x or the y-axis. Either way, it looks the same. Now, that negative doesn't have to just go in front of the 2. I could take the same equation again and put the negative in front of the x. You will see that the purple graph lies exactly where the green graph was lying. I could also put that negative in front of the whole fraction. You can see that the black graph lies exactly where the purple or the green graph was lying. So let's go to our slide and make a note of this. We'll say that to reflect the graph over the x or the y axis, we simply put a negative in front of a up here the x or the fraction. I've also got an image here as a bit of a note of what happened here. So when we had y equals 2 over x in red, when you put a negative out the front, you got the blue graph, which is a reflection of the red graph either over the x or the y axis. All right, we'll move on to our final transformation now, which is called a translation. This is where we're moving our graph either left, right, up or down. So we'll bring up Desmos and write down a really basic equation. We'll write down y equals 2 over x. Now if I want to move this up or down, this is the more simple translation to perform. So I'm going to take the same equation and I'm going to move it up 1. And I do that simply by adding 1 at the end of the equation. We can see that the blue graph is the same as the red graph, except it's been shifted up one step. If I want to shift it down, I do the same thing. I take the equation and I subtract a number. So we'll subtract 3. You can see that the green graph is the same as the red graph, except it's been shifted down three places. So we'll go to our slide and make a note of this. So we'll say to shift the graph up, we simply add a number at the end of the equation. 
and to shift it down we simply subtract a number and I've got an image here of that. Here we're adding one to shift it up one and subtracting three to shift our graph down three. So what about our left and right movements? Once again we'll go into Desmos and we'll write down a very basic equation y equals two over x and to shift it left or right we're going to take the same equation this time we're going next to our x and we're going to write plus one in earlier videos i mentioned when you do this you need to put this in brackets you can if you want it will give you the same result i can put x plus one in brackets but it's not going to change the graph so you don't have to for reciprocal functions anyway when we add one it moves it left one step so if we did the same thing, except this time we subtracted a number, let's say subtract 3, you'll notice that it moves the graph to the right three places. The blue graph is the same as the red graph, except one place to the left. The green graph is the same as the red graph, except three places to the right. Let's make a note of this. So we'll say to shift the graph to the left, we add a number to x. To move the graph, to the right, we subtract a number from x. And I've got a picture here on the left showing that. We can see when we added 1 to x, it shifted the graph to the left one place. And when we subtracted 3 from x, it shifted the graph to the right three places. Anyway, that concludes our video showing you all the different ways we can transform hyperbolas. Remember to read the description below for links to workbooklets that relate to this video.